Wes here with Two Frogs Racing. Uh, for a long time now, ever since back in the military days, I've been a big fan of keeping uh, important things in Pelican cases. And when I first got started in archery, I had a soft case for my bow. And it seemed like every single time I went to shoot it somewhere, the aim point was off when I got there. Like I knocked the peep or something happened just where the aim point was different. And uh, so I decided I was only gonna use hard cases. Well, Josh from Off The Grid Surplus uh, bought my first bow, which is this guy right here in a, a uh, Expedition Archery uh, Eccentric 7. And it needed a little bit of work uh, done to it, uh, get, get it back shooting straight, do a little bit of setup with the rest and some cam timing. And so he sent it back to me in the soft case inside of a, uh, a cardboard box. Then he asked me if I could get him a uh, Pelican case. And a buddy of mine, Dan Witte, had this killer vault case for his bow. And I really liked the way it looked and it's lighter than the Pelican bow case that I've got for my own. And uh, it's a lot simpler and a hell of a lot cheaper. There's nothing to it. And if you've ever done the pick and pluck foam stuff, you'll know that it just takes time and you can you know, get down to the half inch or whatever the, the foam plucks are. But these vaults don't come with pick and pluck. So I figured I'd show you a really killer trick for how to do a custom insert for a gun case or a bow case or whatever you're gonna use it for down to camera gear. And they're pretty simple tools. And I'll show you the tricks. So first thing you do is prep the bow for where you wanna put it. Now I like putting stuff with the sight side up. It takes up a little bit more space in the case, but I think it's a little bit better protected when, you're, when it's all said and done. So you set the bow where you want it. And I might cheat this over just a little bit so that we got room for a spare parts case or something. And try not to come within one inch of the edge anywhere. But we might have a little bit of extra room for some gear on this side if we do it like this. Then you're gonna take some chalk, just like you'd have for a kid, you know, sidewalk chalk or whatever, and outline where you want the case to go. Now, the reason I use chalk is because it comes right off. So that when you're done with all this, um, if you undercut or overcut, you don't have something that is, uh, you know, permanent like a Sharpie that ends up looking bad. And so the first thing I do is run the exact outline along with some imperfections like where I'm gonna overcut a little bit for the site, I mean, for the peep site. And then once you have your outline, you can then refine it a little bit. So now we can smooth out some lines. This doesn't need to drop back in. Just make that nice and smooth. This is where I was clearing the limb savers. Smooth this out. And then we got a pretty nice little shape here that we're gonna cut out. And I've seen some people just hack these up. Now, from here, I wanna do a nice straight edge on both of these so it looks good. And then we'll go to the end. So this is where the, the cool trick comes in. You're gonna get some dry silicone spray, some silicone lube, you can, WD-40 makes it now. And you want a basic run of the mill electric turkey cutter. But you're not gonna believe how trick this is. You wanna make sure that you spray your blade, get it nice and lubed, and we're only gonna use the top layer of foam to begin with. 
We're going to see how far that gets us. Check this out. This is a nice straight edge on the back here, so we'll do that first. Actually, we'll do, we'll do the front first because it'll be pretty trick. The first thing we're going to do is connect these two without worrying about the notch for the site, and then we'll run the perimeter around it. So what you want to do to get the turkey cutter going is you want to make it flat. And then it just goes right through. And once you're through, it's much easier to just do whatever kind of an outline you want. You'll be able to see that it just follows it perfectly here. So we're gonna hit it one more time with the lube. And you can see it made a great, smooth, even cut in the front. And now we're gonna do the back side. And one of the tricks is that if you hold it perpendicular, it makes the smoothest circles or the, the smoothest curves. But if you kind of draw it out, it makes the straightest lines. So if you run it at a large angle, back to perpendicular, There it is. Perfect fit. This thing will ship like this, no problem. What I am gonna do is since there's three total layers, I'm going to cut out a little bit more for the site. And that should get me another couple inches of clearance. And then uh, the little go down without any problem. And now you know how to cut a bow case.